Good morning, everybody. I'm Hans Binder from Leipzig, and I'm very, very happy to be again, 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 again here in Armenia. And I'm especially happy to see this full auditorium of young people interested in our uh, 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 bioinformatics research. And I will try in my talk to give an overview because the other talks will be more specialized about the background, our, what we have done, uh, and maybe what we will do and want to do. Okay. Uh, I, also, I will start with a, a historical uh, survey, but not about our preparation, but more about uh, bioinformatics. Bioinformatics didn't exist before 2000. It was called more bio in biophysics or molecular biophysics, and the people uh, used big machines, mass spectrometry, nuclear magnetic resonance, synchrotron radiation, etc., but also computer simulations to study the uh, properties of different molecules, and to, which helped to understand the, the cell, and in final consequence, helped to design better drugs. Uh, better machines for clinics and better diagnostics. I actually did my PhD in this region in theoretical uh, uh, physics and I worked for a long time uh, 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 in this area uh, as an experimental biophysicist. But uh, we have a complete other kind of science called genetics from the Greek word, word genia, ancestry, and milestones in this development were uh, Darwin's evolutionary theory, uh, Mendel's uh, heredity rules, the uh, discovery of DNA <coughs> structure, uh, PCR reaction, and also the first uh, yeah, uh, uh, study of the human genome. Uh, by the way, the term genetics appeared only 100 years ago, so it's, it's actually relatively young. But uh, this work here, the uh, uh, sequencing of the human genome, around 15, 18 years ago, costed $3 billion. It needed hundreds of scientists working uh, nearly 10 years on this issue. Uh, now we can do the same job within a few hours with one, two scientists and it costs less than 1,000 euros. So we have a real sequencing revolution in the last 15 years, but now the problem arises that the sequencing itself became very, very cheap, but analysis, the people must live, must eat, etc. cetera, so uh, it's, the, it's the more serious problem to hire people to, 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 to find the money for them. Uh, so in principle, these two areas, this big machine biomolecular science developed more or less independent of, on, uh, of genetics, but with the beginning of 2000s, both more or less merged in a novel uh, 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 kind of science, so we have a change of parad paradigm. We now became able to, understanding, to understand how the genome regulates life. And so we have a sort of molecular biology of genomic regulation, including the genome structure, epigenome, everybody knows this, how it gets translated into, into the proteome, but also how it uh, uh, takes place in different organs, organs in the humans, in, in animals. So this is what we are interested in. And here is the time scale in more detail. But uh, this new paradigm requires new experts, new uh, yeah, scientific experts and, 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 and topics. And in Germany, the people understand, understand at the beginning of 2000 that there were not experts in this field. There were physicists, biophysicists, more statisticians, but no expert in that could, could connect biology and uh, this big data science. So, and because of this, uh, in Germany, around 2000, were founded five uh, bioinformatics centers, 
One of them was is the center in Leipzig. I got first the uh, administrator of this center, so I was hired for administrative uh, 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 tasks without science, but after a few years it, it became uh, boring and I switched to bioinformatics and built up a group from the sketch, with first with students, uh, uh, then with, 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 with more people. Uh, so every, uh, everything starts at the beginning of 2000 year. Uh, the big, the Armenian center, or the group, bioinformatics group, was founded 10 years, around 10 years uh, after ITSBI, uh, because Arsene was in simply interested in this field. He understood that it's something new and, and it could complement his studies in experimental biology. And uh, because his boss, Anna, gave him the opportunity to do this, he could build up this, this direction. It was revolutionary in, in Armenia. And uh, so, Shortly after this, we meet each other and we heard from Henry that we have a history. And yeah, it's in my counting still workshop number one last year. <laughs> I'm sorry, last year in Leipzig with uh, about 25 attendees. Now we have, I don't know, 70 or so. That's very nice. Uh, so we are late here in Armenia, but sometimes. Being late is not bad. You will have new, new chances, and let's take them. Uh, what means <laughs> genome bioinformatics for health? What are the ingredients? First of all, these here are the data. We have a lot of data. Uh, first of uh, 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 at first, molecular omics data, uh, genome, epigenome, transcriptome, proteome, etc. Et, 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 et but we have also clinical data. Yeah? Uh, uh, Second, we have computers, but we should use also analytical approaches. I, our best computer is our brain. So first of all, we have to think about and then maybe uh, need computers. But the most important thing in genome bioinformatics uh, are life science concepts and models. That means you have, first of all, to think about life, about diseases, this is the most important thing. If you don't understand this issue, then the other ones don't make sense. Okay, what are the goals? Uh, we interact very frequently with medical doctors, people from, from, from hospitals, and they ask us about markers, tell us markers, how to uh, diagnose some disease. Uh, they ask for powerful computational tools tools, etc. But again, the most imp uh, important thing is to understand disease. If you understand disease, then you can give answers also on these uh, uh, questions. Let's start with a very simple example. Usually, uh, you have healthy and diseased person, and you perform a case versus control comparison. That means you have data collected from many uh, individuals. Data means for example, gene expression values, mutations, whatever. The first task is to order your data. That means you aim at dividing people into healthy and diseased, given the data. And so you have a two-way clustering. You cluster the, the gene expression, for example, and gene mm -hmm. expression clustering clusters also the person, and you, you come up with genes upregulated in the diseased people, and you can use this data for deriving markers, uh, uh, for prognosis and diagnosis, and you can try to understand if you know what genes are upregulated to understand the mechanism of disease. Unfortunately, life is much more complicated. And the first thing is uh, that you usually not only have one, uh, 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 how to say, cluster of genes that uh, divide is healthy, uh, versus uh, uh, a diseased person, you have several such clusters. So you have several kinds of diseases in principle. That's the first thing. The second thing, these clusters can overlap. Which they, that means they are multidimensional. So it's a very fuzzy situation. And we use a kind of presentation uh, that transforms that this rectangular cluster shapes into spot-like shapes. 
we, we use some self-organizing self -organizing maps machine learning. You will hear during many talks about this method, so I will shortly uh, say that this method has a lot of advantages. advantages. One of them is that it provides or trace, it, it characterizes each individual sample. You can look in a personalized style at each individual sample and analyze the, uh, the multi-dimensional data landscape. Henry, who will give the next talk, will introduce into you into this method more in detail. This cartoon that you see here is shortly, how to say, uh, shows samples of cancer specimens. Each dot is one per individual, one person uh, uh, having a certain sort of, 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 of cancer, namely cancer of the lymph nodes. And there are about 1,000 such samples. And this plot shows the similarity relations between these cancer samples. Uh, how similar they are each to another. And on the left hand side, you see these sun portraits that for each subtypes, we have, we have 10 different subtypes uh, of lymphoma. The uh, pathologist told us what sample is what subtype. Uh, uh, and you see on the molecular scale, all of them look very different. Uh, but the question is, what does it mean? Uh, B-cell lymphoma is a very complicated disease. Uh, it is complicated because it arises in the, in, the, in the germinal center, these are the lymph nodes, and there is a complicated biological mechanism to transform or to train B-cells to, uh, to fight against diseases. And there, many things can go wrong, and therefore, therefore you have different kinds of uh, B-cell lymphoma cancers. And this is the, this is the, 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 the germinal center, the lymph node, uh, 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 copied from the, uh, from the Google uh, web. And this is the, the same germinal center. And here are all our subtypes. And we can assign them very exactly what process is going wrong. But uh, looking at these, these portraits, these molecular landscapes, you don't understand them. So the first issue is how to understand, how to read these samples, these images, to understand what is going on. This is our uh, 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 clustering map with different gene clusters, different uh, patient clusters. These are the sum images. We can then collect into one overview map. It is shown here. Red spots means genes overexpressed in different uh, subtypes. So we can assign function to these clusters using bioinformatics techniques. So for example, we can say this cluster is, relates to cell cycle activity. Uh, this cluster assigns to inflammation, etc. This is shown here. You can't read it, but it doesn't matter. Here are written many, many uh, uh, processes that, tell, uh, that uh, tell you what is going on in uh, uh, these genes uh, and subtypes. The next question is, what does this clustering mean, or the appearance of clusters means? In principle, nature uh, performs experiments uh, with B cells. If you want to learn something, uh, what happens? For example, about gravity. I take this part here uh, and perturb it. I put it up, and to know what is going on, I open my hands, and I see that it falls down. What does it mean? It means uh, gravity, because I'm a physicist, I know if it, if it falls down that uh, gravity forces uh, act in downwards direction. So in, 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 in diseases, nothing else happens. Something is going wrong in genomic regulation, and in each subtype, something different is going wrong. So the system gets perturbed, and each cluster uh, is some kind of perturbation. And in principle, this leads to a network uh, where you uh, pick different nodes and perturb them. And we can, these uh, red lines show anti-correlations and correlations between the, uh, between the different gene clusters. And in principle, we come up with different network uh, 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 situations, network states, 
and for the lymphoma, it is shown here. You have these connections between the nodes and what is going on. But what perturbs the biology? There are many, many, there are many, many uh, 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 options. The simplest one are mutations. So the genes doesn't properly work. So something is going on in uh, going wrong in, in genomic uh, regulation, and uh, you can assign the genes to the clusters. This is the gene map. Each dot is a gene, so we know from the lymphoma what what genes performs what or disturbs what kind of subtype. Let's oh sorry. So let's uh, show you one example. Uh, these are the portraits of different subtypes. We choose this, this one here, this portrait of multiple myeloma. It shows a red a gene cluster in the middle of the map. Here we go in the, uh, 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 into the, 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 the landscape of transcriptomic. We see here this spot is characteristic for multiple myeloma and for a muscle subtype, activated B cell, diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So then we go in the function map, we, we read there membrane stress and plasma cell activation. It sounds good. So then we go in the mutation map, we see the genes upregulated is called PRBM1 or LIMP1 alias. So, and then we go again in the Google, check the uh, B cell uh, uh, differentiation, and we see here that plasma cells are activated by down regulation of PLIM1. So, we learned what tells us Google from our data. So, everything is okay, but usually we do the opposite. We uh, uh, study genes that are not known. Next question is we only don't, don't want to know what are the reasons. We don't only want to understand this is, we also want to give some prognosis. And we can transform our map into a prognostic map. Red areas are genes, if they are upregulated, your prognosis will become bad. Blue regions assigned to genes, if they become upregulated, your prognosis become better. And we see our spot in the middle here, this, this, this plasma cell genes, associates with a very bad prognosis. Here are survival curves, this is the bad, the, the poor prognosis of these samples, and these are the, 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 the other uh, subtypes showing a better prognosis. So we can produce as movies for different subtypes, here are survival curves, etc. And we see also this ABC, DLBCL uh, subtype also shows this spot in the middle, so it also associates, associates with a very bad prognosis. Let's switch to another council. Why? Because here, the situation or relation between mutations and, 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 and transcription is more simple. In lymphoma, it's difficult. Uh, this is brain cancer. And first, we did our clustering analysis. And we come up with eight subtypes. So 10 years or 15 years ago, people thought brain cancer is brain cancer, one disease. We now see there are, in principle, eight different diseases. Yeah, on molecular scale. And they differ in their molecular and their, in their mutation characteristics. Here, the EDH gene, isocyanate, isocyanate dehydrogenase, is mutated in these samples here. And you have chromosomal defects on other uh, 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 subtypes here and here. So we have a clear assignment between gene defects and cancer subtypes. Okay, uh, but uh, transcription is only one omics uh, realm. We can look at other omics data, and in this case, we studied DNA methylation, and we did the same job. We clustered them, but we come up with six six sub subtypes. So there is always a difference in the number of subtypes, but there is also a difference in uh, association between the subtypes. Some of them are very similar. We can we have here a confusion matrix showing what subtypes in the, in the expression we are on, in the ventilation uh, we are overlap. Each red uh, 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 point here assigns overlap between the clusters. 
but other doesn't overlap, a special dose here. So you have, a, you have a disagreement between methylation and expression. What is the reason for this? Uh, let's look at these maps. It's an analogy. This is the Caucasus, and you can have a political map of Caucasus with the Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, etc. It's the political map, and you can have a look at the topological map. You see mountains, the big Caucasus, great Caucasus, uh, small Caucasus, here's Sevan. So this is much older. Yeah? It is 10, 100, 200, 500 million of years. This is maximum 100 years. You had, so you have different time scales. And methylation is something that tells us about such ancient uh, 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 things. Yeah? It tells us about the cell of origin, where the cancer, for example, came from, where the cells uh, came from. This is because the DNA methylation is much slower in reaction than gene expression. Gene expression acts relatively fast, so we see different processes. And the, uh, the, the goal is now to combine these different layers, how to combine, for example, methylation uh, uh, with the expression. And if we overlay these two informations, we find different situations. For example, if only uh, uh, expression is regulated yeah. in, a, in a plot, expression versus methylation, we see vertical lines. Uh, where only expression changes in vertical direction and uh, methylation doesn't change. This belongs, for example, for transcription factor networks. We see another situation here where, where both uh, uh, things change, methylation and expression. Usually methylation represses expression. So these are situations where, for example, the genome re or re rearranges uh, to, get, uh, uh, to transform into cancer states. Lydia will give a talk today more in detail about this issue, uh, but she will uh, relate this uh, problem to brain and cancer, how, for example, methylation changes during uh, uh, brain, uh, brain development. The point is that healthy development uh, started with stem cells, goes to differentiated uh, 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 tissue, but in cancer, differentiated uh, cells uh, uh, develop back to cancer stem cells and then develop into uh, 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 developed uh, 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 or differentiated uh, uh, cancer cells. So the, but the situation is even more complicated. In glioma, we have, if we, if we overlay genome, metinome, the transcriptome data, we have uh, three such situations. And this overlay affects cellular processes. In this case, telomere arrangement, Lilith will tell us, uh, uh, tell, to, uh, tell you what telomeres are and how they are affected. And there are different, different mechanisms how telomere length is regulated. And in glioma, we find three different situations or options how it could take place. Lilith will talk about another council. Uh, uh, what is going on there. Only to show how complicated genomic regulation works, again, back to the glioma, the brain cancer example, we saw that the EDH mutation or EDH, EDH gene becomes mutated. Uh, mutation changes transcription of this gene, it changes structure, but the result is, is a, this, this gene or this protein uh, 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 produced from this gene plays an important role in metabolism, and this mutation changes a metab metabolite. Mm -hmm. So it simply changes an oxygen group into an OH, an uh, hydroxy group. And this very, very small change, it's one atom, yeah? uh, completely uh, uh, changes the function of these metabolites. They now repress the methylation uh, enzymes needed in the methylation ma machinery of the DNA. And in consequence, methylation changes and differentiation goes in the complete wrong direction. So mutation, transcription, gene expression, translation, uh, epigenetics, and then cancer. So it's a very long way and complicated. 
So the development is very important to understand how cancer or how the diseases change in time. And our method provides information also about this uh, problem. This is a simple example. This is a yeast cycle. It's a real dynamic experiment. It lasts about one hour, and yeah, the gene expression changed in this way. In the sum representation, you have this rotating spots. Uh, we did the, cell, the same for cancer. And for example, for melanoma, you have two processes, this blue one and this red one. In our sum representation, we can have a, a, a dynamic or pseudo-dynamic uh, analysis coming up with this model. You have two types of melanoma. One goes along pigmentation uh, pathway, the second one um, uh, along immune system changes, and this is both at least leads, uh, both lead uh, to treatment resistance, and finally uh, end up in a highly proliferative state. Siras will give a talk about this issue, but more, but he will focus on splice isoforms. He will tell you what it means and uh, what we have done. Again, about development. We are, development uh, we are developing methods about how to describe development of cancer and diseases. And to do this, we need a, systems, a system where development is easy, understandable. And for this, we choose the worm. But we, and here you see some results, and we want, or we, we apply these results this, of these methodical developments to cancer. Maria, our Maria from Leipzig, will give a talk about this issue. But we have a second Maria uh, from Armenia, and she will also talk about development a bit, at least. But not about development of cells, but about development and migration of people and about their diversity. So in bioinformatics, the methods are very similar and can be applied to both uh, uh, issues. She will talk about uh, yeah, the difference is the variation of the genome of, of people around the world, the world and especially, especially uh, of Armenians. So far, uh, genome bioinformatics for health is more or less in our applications genome bioinformatics for cancer. Mm -hmm. But this is not true. We also work uh, on other diseases, for example, on pneumonia. It's very important disease. It's inflammation of the lung. And uh, it leads typically to sepsis. And you have about 30% of all people die from this disease. And the, the, the bad thing is you are healthy like you get this disease and it could happen that in two weeks you are died. So it's a very important issue to understand how it, it, how it evolves and to derive markers to tell you in intensive care unit uh, what to do. And we did su such uh, analysis, we find new subtypes, uh, with new uh, 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 prognostic uh, uh, perspectives and we also uh, describe the dynamics of pneumonia. And uh, uh, healthy populations are not only characterized by their genomic diversity, but also by their uh, phenotypic diversity. One is the blood, blood transcriptome. Maria did such studies. And what is interesting, for example, we used 3,000 healthy people from Leipzig for this study. And what we find out is very interesting. There are essentially two types of blood, good and bad blood. And the bad blood mostly accumulates in men, elderly people, infected people, medicated people, smokers, drinkers, and obese people, while the good blood is, is found in women, young, young people, non-obese, non-smokers, non-drinkers, and healthy people. So, and you see, this is the age here, these are men, these are women. Uh, for men, they have chance. Until 55 years, everything but gets worse, but then it goes, it, it becomes again better for women, until that, uh, it gets worse. So, so you have different age dependencies. So this is our past and that, that what we have done or what we are presently doing. Actually, the talks today will be mostly about things that are not published, actual running work. 
Now I will talk a bit about perspectives and future developments. This is a slide, this is a slide from a talk that I gave uh, a few years ago at Russian University here in Yerevan, Dr. Histor Dr. Omix. Uh, what is better, uh, diagnostics by pathologists or diagnostics using omix data? This is a question the pathologists uh, looks through a microscope, characterize this, this tissue uh, 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 slides. We looking at the, at the mutations and other omics characteristics. The answer, or the one answer, was given by ourselves in the same year. Uh, we studied also in brain cancer and found out that uh, the genetic characteristics give better results. This was then included in the in the World Heritage uh, classification of glioma, and now uh, uh, genetic markers are used. So the first thing is everybody uh, uh, speaks about deep learning, machine learning, and this year came out a PNAS paper uh, where they used this uh, uh, Dr. Histo uh, slides using deep learning and came up with an improved diagnostics. We propose to do the same with our omics. Uh, 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 images uh, apply machine learning in, and, and try to get better uh, prognosis from this data. This is an offer and question who is interested. Second point, this is a uh, sheet from our application of the OBIC project. And here is a lot of uh, uh, scientific stuff, it's in German, but the vision of this project is the Ar Armenian Genome Center. So Henry, Arsene, and me thought what could be the result. So OBIC is not at the beginning of the uh, Armenian Genome Project, but I want to say you have to have visions. Sometimes they become true from another side. And that's why uh, another vision is the Armenian Phenome Project, because if you study genetics of the shark, of the dolphin, of the, the penguin, you will come up with a, with a fish, with an elephant and a bird, but what joins all of them is that they swim in water, so the environment and the living conditions are important. So without uh, environmental information about phenotype, you don't understand the genetics. Vision number three, uh, data, data, data. Our science generated data over data, but you alone cannot analyze everything. You cannot extract all the information hidden in the data. So what you need is sharing data with other scientists. In Leipzig, we launched a so-called Leipzig Health Atlas, where we share this data uh, with scientific community. You can ask to get this data from us. So vision three is the one health, health Atlas. Not this year, not next year, maybe in five or 10 years. So, and finally, summary. This was my first slide of all the, the ingredients of ingredients of, of, of health bioinformatics. So I told you about a lot of transcriptomic, epigenomic, genomic data. I told you a lot about different cancers, other diseases, uh, and phenotype data. Uh, life science concepts are important. We need to describe the development, heterogeneity, etc. And we have to use different techniques, machine learning, etc. And uh, these are the main results, and these are the main people contributing to this. Thank you very much. <laughs>